Hi again, it's Lawrence Krauss and uh, here for 5 Minute Physics. Now what I want to do today may sound like a huge giant step backwards from the mysteries at the edge of the universe that I talked about before, but in fact it actually relates to it as you'll see. Uh, what I want to start out with is a simple experiment. And it may sound trivial to many of you because you uh, undoubtedly you're a better selection group than the average public, but uh, so you know the answer, but let me just ask the following question. I drop this book, which happens to be, I think, the, the Korean version of one of my books, The Greatest Story Ever Told So Far, and I'm going to drop this book and this piece of paper, which is going to hit the ground first. And uh, let's just do the experiment, although you know the answer. Okay. Now, the next question, which is a key question, is why? Why did the book hit the ground first? Now, you all know the answer, but, or you may think you know the answer, uh, but the interesting reason that this is not a trivial experiment is that a bunch of years ago, I was talking to literally a group of people who were the leaders of the free world in, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a meeting in Aspen, and um, I did this experiment, and I asked which would hit the ground first, and then I asked why, and um, half of the hands came up and said, it'll hit the ground first because it's heavier. Okay? And uh, so then I did the following experiment. I said, really? Okay, let's just test. Let me take this piece of paper and scrunch it up, and now let's try it. And as you can see, maybe you couldn't see it hit the ground. I'll try it here. It hit the ground at the same time. And I said, is the piece of paper heavier now that it's scrunched up? And the answer was no. Now, the reason that this is relevant is, of course, Galileo told us that all objects fall to Earth at the same rate. They accelerate as they fall to Earth at the same rate. And uh, uh, every one of these people who in the audience had gone to college and probably at some point in high school or college had taken a physics class and been told all objects fall at the same rate due to gravity ignoring things like air resistance and everything else. And the teacher had written it down and they'd written it on their, in their books and maybe passed an exam, but it went in one ear and out the other. Because the point is, just learning things by rote in physics doesn't, doesn't get you anywhere. There's a great deal of pedagogical information that tells us that to learn something, one of the easiest ways and one of the best ways is to confront your own misconceptions. And many people, before they're told this, when they, when they're, when they see a piece of paper fall at a lower rate than a book, will say it's because the book is heavier. It's a natural thing to assume, and in fact it was so natural that Aristotle and, and generations of people for, for 15 centuries uh, until Galileo thought that that was the reason the book fell before the piece of paper, that a heavier objects would fall faster. It's one of the many misconceptions. Now, the fact that, as I say, that, that so many people who were college educated still had that misconception indicates that, that what's important in physics is to, is to do the experiment and to confront your own misconceptions and to ask good questions. That, that uh, example that I picked up from Galileo, which w really was from Galileo, he didn't quite do the piece of paper and scrunch it up, but he more or less did the thought experiment, and I want to talk about thought experiments, where he said, okay, do something like scrunch a piece of paper and ask the question whether, what would happen, and all of us, without having done the, the, uh, even the experiment realized if I scrunched the piece of paper into a ball, it would fall at the same rate. So the thing I want to point out is that, is that you can get very far by two things. One, confronting your own misconceptions and seeing if things that are non-intuitive are false. Because one of the things that Richard Feynman said that was so important is that in physics we try and prove things, if we have an idea and a theory, and the theory might be that heavier things fall faster, we try and prove it right if by, by doing experiments, but we also try equally hard to prove it wrong. And that's the key part of science, is taking an idea and trying to prove it wrong, and that means confronting your own misconceptions. Now, the second part of this is asking the right questions, and that's what I want to get to that's going to eventually take me back to Einstein again. There, there are a bunch of... Uh, of, of uh, even if you can't do an experiment, if you ask the right questions and you think about what you know from your previous experience, you can often go very far. And that's one way to tell the wheat from the chaff when you're looking at the internet and you see different claims. Ask yourself, does this agree or disagree with things that I already know on the basis of my experience? And for example, people up to uh, 
Galileo thought that when I drop a bo uh, an object like, like this book, it immediately ach achieves its final velocity. And Galileo said, no, it accelerates at a uniform rate. But the acceleration is, it, it, it happens so fast that it doesn't look like it's starting slow and going faster. So Galileo actually asked, I have a, a bucket here of water, which you can just see I broke, and, um, and, uh, and it's full of water. And um, uh, he asked, if I take an object and I drop it in the water from very low height, what will happen compared to if I drop it in the water from a very high height? And of course, we all know what will happen. It will make a bigger splash if I drop from a high height. I don't have to do the experiment to see that. And so if we ask the right question, when we realize it makes a bigger splash from a high height, that tells us it must be traveling faster by the time it hits the water from a high height than a low height. So things accelerate. And so you can, you can go very far by asking the right questions. And that's how I think physics should be taught. Instead of writing down the answers by rote, you ask the right questions. And already Galileo not only got by asking the right questions that all objects fall at the same rate due to gravity, which was an essential part of physics kit that allowed Newton eventually to derive his equations of not just gravity, but uh, his famous equation F equal to ma, but also the fact that things accelerate at a uniform rate. We can do what later on Einstein called Gedanken experiments, namely thought experiments, things we actually don't have to do the real experiment um, to, 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 to realize what the answer will be. Just like we, the, the, I didn't have to take that bucket and break it, I could have just asked you what would happen if I dropped an object from a higher rate into a bucket and, and, uh, and then the bucket would be in one place and we'd still know the same answer. The bucket would be in one piece and we'd still know the answer. Einstein was famous for asking the Duncan experiments and, and, ask, and asking questions that lead by Gedanken experiments that led him to where he was going. And one Gedanken ex experiment he did and he asked about was what would happen, we've all been in an elevator and we know when the elevator starts up we suddenly feel an extra force pushing us down. And Einstein asked, well, it feels like gravity's stronger when the elevator is accelerating upwards. What if I had an elevator in empty space and accelerate upwards. Well, I'd feel a force pushing me down. And in fact, in fact, if I held an object like this hose in an elevator that was accelerating upwards, it would be staying still in space because there would be no, no, you know, it would be an empty space far away from any stars or planets. It would be still there. But the bottom of the elevator would accelerate up towards it. And if I was in the elevator, it would look like it was falling towards the ground and accelerating. And Einstein said, if I was in an elevator accelerating in empty space, how could I know? that I was accelerating, if there were no windows, or instead that I was in a gravitational field. And he realized that there was no experiment you could tell that would tell the difference between those two things. That led him to the idea that somehow an accelerating frame is the same as gravity. And then he asked a neat question. And once again, the questions are what, what matters. He said, what would happen if I, if I, if imagine this is the elevator and I put a little hole in one end of the elevator and, and, and I shot a laser beam through. Well, of course, the laser beam would, you know, go with a straight line. And I could kind of see that if I hold the laser beam here and here, I'm going to do it here so I can see it. Hold the, hold the laser and I move the elevator at a constant uh, speed to the right, I get a straight line. But now let's imagine that the laser beam shoots in when the elevator is accelerating upward. What would I see if I was in the elevator? So what I'm going to do, in order to see this, I'm going to hold, the, I'm going to hold this, this pen in one spot. It's not moving. And I'm going to move the elevator to the right to, uh, to, to, make it, to accommodate what would be the laser moving this way. But I'm also going to accelerate it upwards. And what would I see for the path of that, uh, of that laser? So I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to move it to the right and accelerate it upwards. And what would I see? I would see the laser beam, if I was in the elevator, it looks like the laser beam is falling. It looks like the laser beam is bending. And that would mean that, okay, well, that in, in my frame, uh, the laser beam was bending, and I'm in the frame of the elevator. But if I take Einstein's idea that there's no way to distinguish between an accelerating frame and a gravitational field, that gives you the idea that light will bend in a gravitational field. But if you recognize that light always travels in straight lines through empty space, that tells you that 
maybe space is curved in the presence of gravity. And that idea is what led Einstein, after 10 years of hard work in mathematics, to the general theory of relativity. So these Gedanken experiments, starting with Galileo and going to Einstein, take us very far, and what it's all about is asking the right questions and being willing to go wherever the answer takes you, even if it seems crazy. At the same time, testing your ideas and your own misconceptions constantly and being willing to change your mind based on the evidence of reality instead of the other way around. That's at the heart of physics, probably the most important part of physics. And it took us in 10 minutes from Galileo to the general theory of relativity. Thanks. Talk to you tomorrow.